Hello guys, hope you've had a wonderful weekend. Welcome back to another episode of Barham Engines. So it's Monday morning guys, we've got a few things to do today. Got to get that Cosworth finished. Um, hopefully I get to crack on with the Focus Mark III RS. Just waiting for a bottom end set on that I think. Um, we've got various cylinder heads, bits and bobs, so let's go and have a little look, see what we got. Right guys, so the Cosworth is coming along now. I've fitted the cylinder head, all torqued down, and I'm just putting the camshafts in. So, first thing I've noticed with this um, is when I take, obviously this one is all in, this is the inlet. You can see I've put the cam lube on, etc. This is all greased up, new front seal in there. Now, don't know whether I've told you this before, but the two wheel drive and the four wheel drive Cosworth front cam bearings, which is this bit here, that takes the load really of the belt tension, um, stops the cam sort of pulling down at the top. It's quite a good design. Um, here is the bearing in its sort of stripped state. So it's just a normal roller bearing there with a seal on the outside. Um, this bit goes on the inside, which turns on the inside of the cam seal, which fits in there. And then this basically all does up with the front pulley on, it all does up. And that there pushes against the back of the bearing, which then pushes against that flange at the back there. Um, it's all a face-to-face -face fit, obviously. And when you torque up that front bolt for the cam pulley, um, it pushes it all together and stops the, allow the oil escaping down and along there and, and leaking out the bolt. On the four wheel drives, it's a different system. Um, what they do on the four wheel drives is they've got basically one of these, but with a chamfer on the inside edge of the back there. And what you do is you slide one of these seals over the end of the cam at the back and then push that collar on with the taper that sits against that seal and that sort of squashes the seal in and stops the oil from leaking out. So that's what you do on the four wheel drives. The two wheel drives, you don't need it. But with this, what I noticed was when I went to undo the cam pulley bolts, they were pretty loose. Um, and I found out the reason for that because somebody has put one of those O-rings on the back and that O-ring was sitting against that flange at the back of the cam there and you can see how squashed and knackered that is. Um, so they've basically put the four wheel drive seal on the two wheel drive system. Um, and obviously you're trying to do the cam pulley bolt up against rubber. Um, and that's why they were loose. That runs the risk of those bolts coming loose and everything falling off. So not a great idea there, whoever's done that. Um, but you can see I've got that one in. What I do is I strip it all out. I clean up all the bearing. I clean up all the shafts here, put new cam seal in, grease everything up um, and sort of start again. What I'm gonna do in a minute is just blast these pulleys, give them a nice lick of silver, uh, make them all look nice and um, get this thing timed up. Get that lovely, lovely cam cover on there and bolted up. And then this engine is pretty much done, guys. Right, update on the Focus ST engine guys. So this is the Volvo slash Ford engine. It's basically the Volvo five cylinder 2.5 um, that they put in the Ford Focus STs and the RSs. So just a quick recap on the problem with this engine and why we come to have it. Um, so a garage has had the car sort of been looking after it over a year, I think. Um, this engine is a brand new engine from Ford. The previous engine had done a big end um, and this one has done the same thing about six months later, I believe, and hasn't done hardly any miles. So we needed to investigate as to why this has done this. So the conclusion, what we've been waiting for and the reason it's been sitting here for so long is because we've been waiting for an oil analysis to come back. So we took what oil was left in the sump and sent that off to be analysed and we've got the report back here from Oil Lab. We use Oil Lab, absolutely brilliant. Um, so we've, first of all, we've inspected the engine. You can see all the main bearing bolts are good, like new. Um, we've checked all the oil ways, um, all the oil galleries for any sort of blockage. Obviously this system here, you've got a cradle rather than just main caps and this sits over the top of the block. And the way the oil is fed is through here, down the back of the bearing and then through the bearing holes. So there's three holes in these bearings. So they get, you know, really good lubrication. And it, 
comes up from this oil gallery here. So this all here fills with oil, goes across here into the, around the mains bolts, which are obviously smaller than these holes. And then it goes up through and down and then down the back of the bearing. So we've checked all that absolutely good as gold. There's no, um, there's no sort of any signs of any blockages. All these bottom bearings look good um, and everything else, the crank here, look, everything else looks really good except for that one end, which is done. Now, the oil analysis. So what we do, we send a sample of the oil off and they come back um, and this is the chart of everything that they found. So the ones with the two stars next to it are the, what they call the alarming levels. Um, iron is high, aluminium is high. Well, it's going to be because you've got the metal off the, um, off the crankshaft and then you've got the metal off the bearing. So that's usually why that's high if it's done an end. Um, now you've got silicon and sodium, basically, if this engine was in, as, as in one, um, if the silicon is high, then it means that it could have had a potential head gasket issue, so it means it's got coolant in the oil. Um, but this thing, having been stripped, I suspect that water has gone down the bores um, or into the sump from taking the cylinder head off, so that's usually why that's a bit high. Um, but what we're actually looking for really was the, the fuel dilution. So the viscosity is all good of the oil. Um, it had the correct oil in it, etc. But fuel dilution is zero. So that means it's got no fuel in the oil whatsoever. So that's a good thing um, in respect that it's not the diluted oil that has caused the bearing to go. So we, we're happy that the viscosity has all been good with the oil. Um, so that isn't an issue. So the next thing, we've inspected the pistons. Um, usually if it doesn't end like that and it's no blockage or anything from uh, the sort of the oil feed or it's not a viscosity issue, we start looking at the pistons then. So here are the pistons. Um, so we've had a good look. All the big end bearings except for this one, is, is, they're all good. Um, all the small ends are good. All the pistons and the piston crowns, if you look at the skirt there where the Teflon coating is they all look absolutely new because they are pretty new um, looks fairly good on the surface that's usually what these things look like and um, the only thing we did notice on number two is on this side there is a bit of scuffing on the teflon where there is no scuffing on any others now if there was scuffing on the others as well i would suspect that it is um, the debris from the bearing gone in the oil that has maybe gone up the bore and caused the scuffing. Um, but if we look on this side, that does look pretty bad, especially down to down towards the ring side of that skirt there. Um, and then round the edge, round the edge of that top ring there, um, it doesn't look. It looks a bit clean, I would say. Um, so I would say that this thing maybe has started to get a bit warm, um, a bit warmer than the others on the skirt there. The skirt measures slightly down, so I suspect that you may have some sort of heat seizure going on there. Um, so what I've said to the customer is we can get the injectors flow tested, but did you replace the injectors with new injectors when you replaced the engine? He said, no, they were the old ones. And I said, well, in my opinion, the only thing that really could sort of cause this is if you've got um, an injector that's a bit iffy on the flow, a bit iffy on the spray pattern maybe, started to go down. These things are quite critical. All new engines are really with these high pressure sort of um, direct injection injectors. Um, it can cause extra load onto the crown, um, which can cause the big end go. We've seen that many a times before. So. As we've got to the bottom of this now, guys, it seems like we've got the old injectors. The injectors could have caused two engines to go. Um, but that's not to say, as I say, you could get them tested and the flow could be okay on them, but the spray pattern could just be out. So I said, I recommend on any of these engines, once they've had an issue similar to this, just buy a new set of injectors. Don't buy reconditioned injectors. We've had 
bad experiences with them in the past, obviously where they you can replace everything that you can replace on them, but the actual body can be worn, so the, the pattern is not as it should be. Um, so yeah, my advice, my conclusion on this, got a bit of an injector issue on number two. Um, brand new set of injectors and it'll be and it'll be all good to go. So unfortunately it's um, it's done this. So what I've got to do now, the next stage is to send over an estimate on my the labour and building this up and the machining etc. We're going to need a new crankshaft because that can't be that can't be ground and a new com rod. So obviously that's going to make quite a bit of difference to the overall cost. So they're going to then look at that, weigh it up, whether it's worth buying another new engine or getting us to do this one. So that's where we are with the Focus ST guys. So there we go guys, the Cosworth is all finished. Yet another Cosworth. Got the lovely red cover there with the silver pulleys, all looking very original and standard. We've even cleaned up the distributor and what have you. All timed up and he's all ready to go. So just sent the, the customer Mark the invoice. He's paid that, got to get this on a pallet, get it on its way to him in the next day or so. As easy as that guys, so yeah, very, very nice. Um, I'd love to just have one in my front room sitting there, but they're a little bit too valuable for that now, and uh, my wife would not be happy about that. Moving on now, with Isaac is doing the MR2 engine. You can see the head's all done over there. The bottom end he's been getting together, bless him. Um, and I'm just teaching him how to do the rods. So first of all, he sized the rods. Now these rods are all on the tight side, not too tight, they're right on the bottom limit. But I've said to him, with these, um, with the size of the crank, we want to go to top limit, run them on the slacker side. You've got seven tenths um, of tolerance on these um, housings. So seven tenths, that's almost three quarters of a thou. In engineering terms, that's like a country mile, really. So um, we're going to run them on the slacker side. Um, which he's done. I've showed him how to measure from top to bottom, side to side, and obviously the whole width or thickness of the, of the rod all the way across. He's done that, he's sized them absolutely perfect. Now he's balancing them. What I'm showing him is how to set it up on here um, and do them end for end. So you can see here he's marked them one to four and he's got his, um, got his little weigh-ins over here. Um, and you're talking about five grams difference between these rods now. So he's going to have to do the usual, take them off the, from the heaviest, take it off the big end. You can see here he's done some grinding marks. And I've said, once you do that, go and do the small ends, then weigh the rod as a complete unit. Um, and then maybe if there's sort of more than a gram out, go back to the big ends and, and check them over again. So that's what Isaac's doing. He's doing really well. Same here with the pistons. Um, he's weighed them as a complete unit and I think they range about three, sort of three grams. Um, so what we're gonna have to do is he's got to take them off the base of the piston and take the weight out of the base. So if I just move all this, try not to disturb his set up here um, what we normally do is take it out the base here so we set that up in the lathe and we just turn the aluminium out as much as we can um, just on this base and that's normally for three grams that's that will do the job there um, so so yeah another little lesson for Isaac today um, he's doing really well once he's done this I suppose tomorrow um, he's going to be well on his way with that MR2 engine I think I've got all the bits for it yeah, so I shall get this Cosworth out of the way, get him on a bench and um, get him looking a bit more professional here. But yeah, he's doing really well. This is his first sort of modern four-cylinder 16 valve that he's going to have entirely built himself. So top work, Isaac. Well, that is it for today's video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Until Wednesday, have a great evening and we'll see you then. Cheers, guys.